Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Professing over confessing, gotta mean what I say Receive my free gift of righteousness, release a blessing every day All because of Bishop, way he preaching and teaching Help me understand the Bible, change the way I was speaking Made me realize God's the reason I'm here to testify, God's been good this season Because of Christ, now my life done got some meaning He paid the price, solid foundation like cement So everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Join the ministry. We live over here. Oasis of faith. Big empire. Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Because of God's grace we live in this non -parole. He's made an indelible imprint in my life. He changed my life and gave me hope. Yeah, he inspires me every day. Show Bishop Flower. He's God. a bad man. God broke the law when he made me. With Bible revelation for days Get you where you need to be I'll show you the ways your problem solver And solving problems get you paid Who did? God did So you should give him the praise God broke the mold when he made me Impacting people's lives with the wisdom that he gave me Got it out the mud Still fly as can be In this red gold teeth Nobody bad like me Nobody bad like me I change lives Like the law of lift They can't fall They just rise I give them hope Help them to know their God Creating a people
Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, we'll let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, we'll let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Cause of God's grace we live in prosperous Devil almost had his way but he ain't stopping us Cause we covered in his blood, all we needed was his love Yeah, he gave his only son and then returned it when I our trust I just get happy when I think about it Cause the Lord been good to me, I ain't the same inside Yeah, the devil had me thinking that I was nobody Then I held it to my left and saw the Lord beside me God inside me, everybody Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use That's for you. Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah. Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you. God is always on time, and that's the truth. Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Professing over confessing, God, I mean what I say. Receive my free gift of righteousness, release a blessing every day. All because of Bishop, way he preaching and teaching. Help me understand the Bible, change the way I was speaking. Made me realize God's the reason. I'm here to testify, God's been good this season Because of Christ, now my life done got some meaning He paid the price, solid foundation like semen So everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the word, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Join the ministry. We lay over here. Oasis of faith. Big empire. Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Everybody get together, clap your hands, hallelujah Bishop coming with the words, so let the Holy Spirit use you God is always on time and that's the truth Can you put facts in the chat if that's for you? Because of God's grace we live in is non -parole. He's made an indelible imprint in my life. He changed my life and gave me hope. Yeah, he inspires me every day. Show Bishop Flower. He's God. a bad man. God broke the law when he made me. Apostle T.K. Grant III, I am the founder and the senior pastor teacher of Oasis of Faith. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're rejoicing and being glad in it. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, and I thank God for saving me. I mean, I am excited about what God is doing in this season of my life. And I'm excited about what God is doing in this season of your life. I'm believing that God is taking us to new levels, new heights, and new dimensions. I need you to get your phone out, your other phone, your other phone, your laptop, your pen, your paper, your pad, your tablet, your computer, or whatever it is you use to chronicle notes down on so that you can be refreshed and renewed in your mind at a later point so that you might prove what is the good, the perfect, and acceptable will of God even for you. Not only that, but get your libation of choice so you can be refreshed in the natural 
as you are being refreshed in the spirit. And then finally, I need you to give me my druthers, those red, rojo, exclamation points, the bombs, the lava, the fire, uh, the dancing dogs, the cooking cats, the prayer hands, the high fives. Help me encourage your internet neighbor, your virtual friend, and your cyber partner in the very name of Jesus, our Christ, and our King. We're going to pray, and then I'm going to read a testimony, and then we're going to get straight to it. Father, how we thank you tonight, how we bless your name tonight, how we are excited about what you are doing tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for revelation knowledge that flows freely, unhindered. Uh, Father, we thank you that we're going to be able to see and to hear and to understand in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the supernatural and the miraculous are commonplace as we adhere to the word of faith, Galatians 3 and 5. We stand on that. And we just receive the best is now in Jesus' name. For your glory and for our good, our soul says yes and amen in Jesus' name. Put your hands together if you're believing God tonight. If you're believing God tonight, could you put that's me in the chat? If you're believing God tonight, can you put that's me in the chat? All right, let's look at our testimony. Our se oh, 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 I just noticed this. I just noticed this. This says testimony is from Tiffany, Sister Tiffany Stewart, but it says part one. I just noticed the part one. Uh, that must mean there's another part to follow, but let's dive in to part one. It says, hi, Bishop. As you know, last week, Paisley was sick. For everybody who don't know Paisley, Paisley is her little daughter. Paisley, Paisley loved Bishop. Paisley loved it, Bishop. God bless Paisley. With my, with, she says, Paisley was sick. With my education and experience being in a pre being a preschool teacher, I noticed she sold signs of a croup. Croup is in the category of RSV, a serious bacterial infection in the upper respiratory system. So I jumped on the horn to make sure she's okay. I I took her to chop. We waited for like an hour and a half to get into a room. I was about to say, forget it. But then Paisley's name was called. The medical professional came to me and said, we're going to fast track Paisley. Come with me. From there, we were in a room in the ER waiting and waiting. Bishop, you know my patience is thin. Laugh out loud. Her patience is thin. I almost left again. At that moment, Elder Delgado texts me and said, how's Paisley doing? She previously asked me to send updates, but she wasn't waiting for my updates. She just continued to check on Paisley. I told Elder Delgado, well, we're waiting to see the doctor. It's been a long time. I don't know when we'll see the doctor. Elder Delgado sent me a text back praying favor over us that we would see the doctor soon. I lie to you not, Bishop. Not even two minutes later, the doctor walked in. Thank you, God, for people who know how to pray and speak over your life for you. I appreciate and love Elder Delgado. This is the second time she has prayed favor over me and God moved in my favor in minutes or instantly. I want to thank Elder Delgado for always making sure my family is okay and working on my behalf. Like you say, Bishop, no one has to be nice or kind to you. I am grateful that I have strong women in faith that are beside you that help me. I knew you were praying but the fact that I can go to anyone attached to you spiritually and know they can help and know they can help as well is the best. Bishop, you are so awesome. Thank you for bringing me more awesome people like yourself. You are an amazing person and anyone attached to you clearly has your anointing. Love you, Bishop. I appreciate you immensely. 
Thank you, Elder Delgado, for loving me as I am and helping me. Love you, Elder Delgado. Come on, put your hands together. Somebody say there's no secret to what the Lord can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for me too. Amen, 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 amen. We're talking. We're talking tonight. We're in the middle of a series, uh, working prayer because prayer works. Somebody say working prayer, working prayer. because prayer works. Okay, prayer. Now, I, I want to, I read this verse a couple of weeks ago, but I want to read it again before I get started. Romans 5 and 20. I want to read it again because I don't want anybody to be discouraged about anything I have to say. It says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But watch this. I, this is the part I love. This is the part that gives me comfort. But where sin abounded, mm -hmm. grace abounded much more. Somebody say, where sin abounded, mm -hmm. grace abounded much more. Mm -hmm. Sin, that by definition, is to miss the mark. Now, why is this verse important when I'm talking about prayer? Because a lot of us don't know the rules of prayer. A lot, of doesn't, a lot of us don't know how prayer really works. And so I'm giving you rules to pray. And I don't want anybody to say, well, if I don't know the rules, it's useless to pray. It's never useless to pray. Because for wherever you are, there's a grace for that. Somebody say, wherever I am, there's a grace for that. Somebody say, I was saved by grace. Somebody put grace in the chat. Somebody say, I abound in grace. So, so there's a grace. You don't know a lot about faith. There's a grace. You don't know a lot about healing. There's a grace. You don't know a lot about prayer. There's a grace for what level you on. Why then am I teaching about answer prayer or teaching about prayer? If there's a grace, because grace is unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor. So God's going to give me something I didn't earn. God's going to give me something I don't deserve. God's going to give me something I didn't merit. Okay, so then he can give it to me how he wants to give it to me, when he wants to give it to me, the way he wants to give it to me in that season of my life. Yes. I am trying to move you from whatever grace you're on and your prayers happening to come to pass, however they come to pass, into a realm and into a season of guaranteed answer prayers. So this lesson is not so you can stay where you are and for pray and I'm relying on the grace of God. Uh, no, I'm relying on the fact that I'm meeting the, I'm meeting the rules. Uh -huh. I'm relying on the fact that this is how God said it worked. And so I do it the way he said it. Therefore, it's guaranteed because the promises of God are yes and amen. So I, I'm, I'm teaching you prayer in a way that the result is my prayers have guaranteed answers. Somebody say guaranteed. guaranteed. Put guaranteed in the chat. You want not, okay, maybe five years down the line, maybe it happens, maybe it don't happen. Now I got to want. No, I am teaching you the rules of prayer so you can have a guaranteed answer answer prayer. Is that okay? Yes, so I want you to understand that if you don't know all the rules, that doesn't mean don't pray. There's a grace for where you are. But I want you to move into a realm where you can know every prayer is going to be guaranteed. Every answer is coming. Am I making any sense? Yes, okay. Mark eleven twenty four. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Mark eleven twenty four, And it says, therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. This is about a prayer of petition. This is about a prayer of faith. And this is the prayer that we pray most of the time. However, this is not the only prayer in the Bible. So let's look at Ephesians 6 and 18. Ephesians 6 and 18. It says in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. 
I want to look at clause A, praying always with all prayer. With all prayer lets me know that there are different kinds of prayer or different types of prayer. And if there are different kinds of prayer and different types of prayer, then there are different rules for each kind of prayer and different rules for each type of prayer. And so we looked at the types of prayer uh, that we could find and we had a prayer of agreement. If you could put up the six types of prayer, all six of them, so that we could just look at them and see them, all six of them. I want everybody to be able to see. We had a prayer of agreement. Take a picture with your phone if you can. And then we had a prayer of faith and petition. Mm -hmm. And then number three was a prayer of uh, consecration and dedication. And then number four was a prayer of praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And then number five was a prayer of intercession. And number six was the prayer of binding and loosing. And when we were together the last time, we began talking about binding and loosing. Mm -hmm. But in, as we were talking about binding and loosing, I took you to John chapter 14, and I want to pick up where I took you because I introduced something uh, that a lot of people, if I just go over it one time, I'd be like, I, I, I need to hear that again. I really need to, you to really, you know, help me with that because you were taught one thing or told one thing that is not necessarily true. Uh, and so we looked at something which is called prayer by a lot of the church that's not prayer. Mm -hmm. Universally, a lot of the people of God believe that this is prayer and it's not prayer. Yeah. Uh, has nothing to do with prayer. Mm -hmm. But the problem is... Uh, we have been told things and not taught things. We have been told things and not taught things. And we have not examined the scriptures so that we could be on point. Now, I don't know how many of you remember, but the last thing that I think I pre the last series that I preached to you was about increase. Mm -hmm. Series before that was about the blood of Jesus. Series before that was about the name of Jesus. And I don't know if you remember, but when we preached about the name of Jesus, we, we kept saying faith begins where the will of God is made known. And we said that you can't have faith for a thing mm -hmm. unless you know the will of God about a thing. Yeah. And until I know the will of God about a thing, then I don't have legitimate faith for it. Somebody say, you talking good, Bishop. Good. All right. So, so we said that there was a threefold glory to the name of Jesus. And we said the name of Jesus is used for three things. One, it gives us authority over the enemy. We talked about that. Number two, it gives us the ability to get our prayers answered. And number three, it gives us the ability to do the works of God. So now watch this. If it gives us the ability to do three things, get my prayer answered, do the works of God, and take authority over the devil, then watch this. Works of God and prayer are two different things because they are inclusive in the three different things that the name of Jesus gives me the ability to, to do. Am I making any sense? And so therefore, I started looking at John 14 and telling you that it was about works and not about prayer. And a lot of people don't understand that because of the word ask. But I want to go through it and I want to break it down and show it to you and use a story in the Bible so that you can be absolutely clear biblically that what I am saying, I have studied out what I am saying. The Bible is going to show you and you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt what the word is talking about. Is that good? Is that good? Somebody put that's good. Bishop. It's good. All right. Let's go to John 14. Let's revisit it. We examined it, but let's revisit it. John 14, 12 through 14. John 14, 12 through 14. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, Jesus is talking. Somebody say Jesus is talking. Put Jesus in the chat, all capital letters. Jesus is talking. Most assuredly, I say to you, 
he who believes in me, watch this, the works that I do, he will do also. We're not talking about prayer. We're talking about works. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Verse 13, and whatsoever you ask in my name, I will that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, and if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah. Somebody say, he will do it. He will do it. Say it again, he will do it. He will do it. Somebody say, not give it. Not give it. Do it. Do it. So in chapter 14, Jesus is talking about what he will do. Somebody say, what he will do. What he will do. Not what he will give you. Yeah. What he will do. Yeah. The, reason I, the reason I do what I do is because Jesus is not here to do it. Yeah. And so since I'm his representative in the earth, I have been commissioned to do it. So there are works that need to be done and the church are his hands in the earth. We, the body of Christ, are his hands in the earth. Yeah. And so therefore, we do it, but it's him doing it through us. Yeah. Jesus said, this is how he put it, it's not me, it's the Father in me that's doing the work. So he says, although it looks like I'm doing it, it's the Father in me doing the work. Mm -hmm. There's some work that you are going to do, and it's going to look like you're doing it, but it's going to be Jesus in you doing the work. Am I making any sense? Let's look at verse 13 again. Let's look at verse 13 again. It says, we're in John chapter 14, and we're looking at verse 13. And whatever you ask, Jesus is speaking in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Somebody say that word ask really means demand. Put demand in the chat. Put demand in the chat. That word ask really means demand. So you're not really asking him for anything. You are making a demand, right? Prayer is asking the father for something, but you are not asking the father for anything. You are making a demand in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So he says, no, notice, notice, it doesn't say, now let, can I go deeper? Y'all yes, sir. ready? Yes, sir. It doesn't say uh, you are demanding anything from God. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say you're demanding anything from God. Or it doesn't say you're demanding anything of God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just says you're making a demand. Didn't say you're making a demand of God. Didn't say you're making a demand from God. Am I, am, I, am I making any sense? It says that you're making a demand in the name of Jesus. I'm going to check this, taking it slow. So in prayer, you know who you are asking. Who are you asking? The Father. Here, it didn't say that you were asking or demanding anything of the Father. It didn't say you were demanding anything from the Father. It just simply said you were making a demand, but you were making the demand in the name of Jesus. This is important because we've got to distinguish this from prayer. So you are not walking around thinking that you should pray and get something done that's never going to get done because you shouldn't, because it doesn't take prayer. It takes authority versus prayer where you have a right to get this thing happen to happen in your life. I hope I'm helping somebody. Is anybody listening to me today? They listening? I need you to get this. I need you to get this. Somebody say, I'm just making a demand. He says, whatever you demand in my name, I will do it. Watch this. Not whatever you demand of me, but whatever you demand in my name, I will do it. All right? Let's look at a Bible example. Acts chapter 3. Woo! Woo! We teaching tonight. We teaching tonight. I, I'm, I look. You you came to the right church. I keep saying this is a teaching ministry. I'm gonna teach you how to work your Bible. I'm gonna teach you how to work your Bible. Your life is gonna live if you listen to me. 
your life is going to get drastically better. I can promise you that. Acts chapter 3. Let's start at verse 1. It says, now Peter and John. Now, I really want you to pay attention because I'm going to show you some stuff in the story that you never thought about. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Somebody said they went together, they went together to, the to the temple at the hour of prayer. Somebody said, that sounds like the right thing to do. All right, verse two, verse two. Watch verse two. You got to pay attention to verse two. And a certain man, lame. Somebody say lame. lame. Somebody say he can't walk. He can't walk. From his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. How long? From his mother's womb. I say how long? From, his from, his, from birth, from birth, from his mother's womb mm -hmm. was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Mm -hmm. Now, how often did they bring them? Daily. Okay. I'm going to just go with y'all said daily. So say daily. Put daily in the chat so I know y'all with me. Daily. How often did they bring them? Daily. Put it in the chat. D-A-I-L-Y. Daily. Put it in the chat. Daily. How long did y'all bring them? How long did they bring them? Now, I got this important question to ask you. I got this important question to ask you. He been, he been, he been, he been laying from birth. They bring him daily. Can somebody please tell me, what do daily mean? Every day. Every day, right? So daily means every day. It don't mean every other day, right? It don't mean every Friday. Daily mean daily. All right, every day. So we keep, I just want to make sure. Because when I say some stuff, oh, where he get that from? <laughs> no, did, did, did the Bible say he come daily? Yeah. All right. All right. That's what it said. Let's keep, let's keep reading. Verse 3. Verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John mm -hmm. about to go into the temple, asked for alms. Verse 4. Verse 4. And fixing his eye and fixing his eyes on him with John. Peter said, look at us. All right. So he gave them, watch this, his attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need you to pay attention. I need you to pay attention because you read kind of fast. And sometimes you just, ooh, that makes sense. No, it don't. He, they said, look on us. And the Bible said, so he gave them his attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, comma. Complete thought, not complete statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, a complete statement, rather, not a complete thought. Complete mm -hmm. statement. He gave him attention. Now, it didn't say and expecting. I wish God, I wish y'all, I, I wish I had time to teach y'all English. It just, it just said, and he gave him his attention, comma. That's the complete thought. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the complete say, statement, not the complete. Expecting to receive something from them. Why was he expecting to receive something from them? They, they, they didn't say they was going to give them none. They just, they just said, look at us. Uh -huh. So he did what they said, gave them their attention. So if, I, if I'm on the street or somebody on the street says, uh, can I get some money? I say, look at me. Mm -hmm. They don't know if I'm going to say, Did you ought to be ashamed of yourself from being out here. They don't know what I'm going to say. But it gave him attention. But then it said expecting yeah, mm -hmm. to receive something from them. Uh -huh. Whoa, whoa, this is getting good to me. I'm 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 excited. What does expecting mean? Um. Anticipating, right? Thinking something getting ready to happen. Yeah. Now, let me go back to this. Let's go back to it. how often did this guy come to the how often did they bring him here? Yeah. I say again. How often, y'all say, when I say how often, you say daily. How often? Daily. How often? Daily. When I say how often, you say daily. How often? Daily. How often? Daily. Okay. Now, Peter and John come to the temple during our prayer. Do you think that happens once a month? <laughs> no. How, how often do you think Peter and John go to the temple to pray? Almost daily. Whenever they're at home. On a regular basis. 
So if this guy come daily uh -huh. and they go very often, wouldn't it be likely that they that he know who Peter and John are? Yeah. And if Peter and John say, look on us, and they say, and the Bible said he looked and expected to receive some, probably likely that they gave him money before. Yeah. This is not, this is not ooh spooky. He's there every day. They there almost every day. He make his living by asking money. They got money. Right. Now, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. He's not some person that is asking money illegal. He, If you study the time, he has clothes that says he is, he is legit. You can give him money if you feel like it and you are not being robbed. I wish everybody at Dunkin' Donuts had something on them that said uh, he's legit. But they don't, so I don't give at Dunkin' Donuts. But anyway, moving on. He got he got clothes that say he legitimately is not faking. You can give him money. He they see him about to walk into. He sees them about to walk the temple. They say, "Look on us. Let's go. Let's keep going. Let's go." This is getting good to me. Verse six. Verse six. Then Peter said, "Silver and gold I do not have. He know they got some money." Right. But what, but what he's saying, that ain't what I got today. That ain't what you're getting today. But what I do have, well, I don't have that for you today. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have been anointed to give you something different today. I've been anointed to do something different in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Then, watch this, he took him by the right hand. Now, this guy didn't know Peter and John. Why he going to let them grab his hand? Yeah. Hey, get off of me. Right. You ain't giving me no money. Get off of me. No, he gave him his hand. Yeah. Oh, my God. I wish. Is anybody still listening to me? Yes, sir. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and his ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. He know them boys. Walking, leaping, and praising God. Yeah. Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Watch this. Can I go deeper? Yes, sir. How often did this man come? Daily. Y'all is y'all putting daily in it? Is y'all saying daily? Put daily in the chat. I need to know you with. Again, I'm gonna ask you because I'm gonna go here. Because I read the Bible, and I want you to be a student of the Bible. How I, The Bible say daily for a reason. When it say daily, you need to understand that God is doing more than giving you decoration in the scripture. How often does this man come? Daily. Peter and John come often. Now, how long you think Peter and John been going to pray? How long you think? Since yesterday? They've been doing it. Guess who they usually walk with? Before he died. So guess who know this man? Guess who walked by this man into the temple? What? Because the man been coming for almost 40 years. Since he been grown enough to come. So let's say 12. So the man been coming for almost 30 years. He says he been grown enough to come. He, he had to see Jesus. But he didn't get healed. He didn't get healed because it wasn't his time. Because he wasn't looking for healing. He was looking for money. But the Holy Ghost, because this is a gift of the spirit that Peter is working on, decides it's your time. Watch this. 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 You, you with me? What does the Bible say in, in John chapter 14? Jesus said, whatever you what, demand in my name that I will do. So it's not like he didn't get healed by Jesus. It's just he didn't get healed by Jesus yet. All right, sir. Wasn't that Jesus didn't heal him? Jesus didn't heal him yet. But Jesus is going to heal him because the text says, whatever you demand in my name, who going to do it? Jesus, I'm going to do it. Why? So that the Father can be glorified in the Son. 
Bishop Grant, you are teaching today. You are teaching your complexion off. Are you still here? All right. All right. All right. Watch this. Watch this. So let's let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep let's go to 10. Let's go to 10. Let's go to 10. Let's go to 10. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms, the people, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Now, as the lame man who was healed on held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. Verse 12. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? He said, we didn't do that. Now pay attention. Jesus said, if you make it to man, who going to do it? Jesus said, he going to do it. Yeah. What is Peter and John saying? We didn't do this. Okay, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorify his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Verse 14. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. You ain't tried to get, you didn't want Jesus to get no glory. And and kill the prince of life. Who's the prince of life? Jesus, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. Verse 16. And watch this, verse 16. And his name. Whose name? Jesus' name. Through faith in his name. So you don't just need the name. What do you need? Faith in the name. That's why I taught you about the name of Jesus. And his name, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. I guess we all know this guy because we all come to the temple on a regular basis. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This was done, watch this, at the demand of Peter in the name of Jesus, so that the Father would get glory in the Son. Uh -huh. We'll try this again. Peter made a demand, and it was done in the name of Jesus, so that the Father would get glory in the Son. Ain't that what Jesus said was going to happen in John 14 before he ever died? Yes. Oh, I'm trying today. This is what John chapter 14 is talking about. Now watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. They still with me? Everybody still with me? Pay attention. Y'all paying attention? Uh, give me an ear. Give me a, uh, do they got emojis like this? Yeah. Give me, give me one of these emojis. Oh. They don't got no emojis like this. Ear, give me, yeah. give me an ear. Give me something. Oh, give me what? Listen. Give me a listening. Give me something. I need to know you're listening. Let, let me know. Let me know. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You ready? Peter didn't pray one time. Not one time. Did Peter, but did Jesus said that how you pray is by asking the Father something. He didn't say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask now that you do. This. Now, I know that Peter know how to pray because when he came to heal Tabitha, he knelt and prayed. So Peter must understand prayer because the Bible shows me him praying. But right here, Peter does not pray at all. He makes a demand. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he is doing the work of God. Whoa, Jesus, I'm trying. Is this, is this any good? Is this helping anybody? He's doing the work of God. Yeah. Jesus was not physically there to do it. So Peter was. And he never cried out in prayer. Yeah. He just demanded in the name of Jesus and picked the boy up and it happened. No prayer necessary. He made a demand because he was doing the work. 
and he made the demand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. That is what John 14 is talking about. You make a demand in my name and I will do it. Yeah. The works of God. Mm -hmm. All right. So who is he demanding from? At this point, he demanding the devil to let him go. At this point, he's demanding the devil to let him go. He's, but he's making that demand in the name of Jesus. This is not prayer. I know that you read in John 14, ask. And the other preacher told you, ask. But I told you there are certain things that the name of Jesus does. Takes authority over the devil, gets the work of God done, and prayer. So you need his name for all of those. This is not prayer. This is making a demand. I want you to understand this so that you understand who you are, what you can do, the kind of power you wield, yeah. and, and what God is willing to use you to do, and at the same time, what God is willing to give you. Now, let's look at what prayer is. Let's look at what prayer is. Turn to John 16 and 23. Turn to John 16 and 23. I hope I'm teaching tonight. John 16 and 23. This is something you need to tell all your friends to listen to. Y'all need to go on. You've been listening to this one. And in that day, Jesus is speaking again. Somebody say, Jesus, put Jesus in the chat. I know you put him in the chat for works. Put him in the chat for prayer. Put Jesus in the chat. Put him in. Put him in. Jesus, all capital letters. Put him in the chat. Jesus. He says, and in that day, you will ask me nothing. Now, pay attention. He says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, the Father will give it to you. Now he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Am I making any sense? He said, you ask the Father and you ask him in my name, who's going to give it to you? The Father. Put the Father in the chat, because I can't hear y'all. Put the Father in the chat. He said, you ask the Father. Who do you ask? The Father. In whose name? Jesus name. And who's going to give it to you? The Father. the Father. So you ask the Father in Jesus' name, and he's going to give it to you. Okay. Jesus says, in that day. Mm -hmm. So if he says, in that day, whatever day he's talking about ain't the day he's living in. Right? Because yes, he would just say today. But he didn't say today. He said in that day. Yeah. What day is he referring to? It is obviously after his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. He is talking about the day of the new covenant of grace. Mm -hmm. In the new covenant, when grace abounds, you will ask me nothing. You will ask the Father in my name, and he will give it to you. Yeah. Am I making any sense? Yeah. So the day he's talking about is the one we live in and have been living in for the last 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't live in the new covenant. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't live in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Jesus operated under the law. He came under the law so that he could fulfill the law so we wouldn't have to fulfill it anymore and we could live in a day of grace. But he could come live in a day of grace because he had to fulfill the law so we wouldn't have to fulfill it. Am I? Doing good. Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. If I'm making sense, I might say I'm with you, Bishop. Mm -hmm. So he had to obey the law. He had to obey it to the T, dot every I, cross every T so that you, that wouldn't have to be a uh, uh, hanging on you and weighing on you like it was under the Old Testament. Am I making any sense? Okay. Verse 23. Uh, in that day, you will ask me nothing. So Jesus says, you will ask me what? Nothing. nothing. You talk to him, but don't you have to be asking him for stuff because he already told you that I'm giving you what's mine and I'm going to the Father and what the Father has given me, the Holy Spirit is going to give you. You don't have to ask me. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. All right. We're heirs and joint heir. You're a joint heir with me. You don't have to ask me. 
That day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Okay, now watch this. You cannot find any scripture in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, or in John, a prayer ever prayed by the disciples to the Father. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Who did Jesus say you got to pray to in that day? The Father, right? Who we got to pray to? The Father. You cannot find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John any of his disciples ever praying to the Father. The best you could get, the closest you can get, is when they came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. And like John taught his disciples to pray, and Jesus said, well, in the meantime, if you want to learn how to pray, you could pray, our Father, which y'all have. But you ain't never seen them pray it. You ain't, you ain't got no evidence that they ever prayed that prayer. You know why? Because Jesus was always right there. Somebody say, Jesus was already always right there. So they just got what they needed from him. Am I making any sense? Whatever they needed, they just came to Jesus. Okay, you don't believe me? Let's read verse 24. Let's read verse 24. I'm teaching tonight. I am. It says, watch this. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Just in case. Bishop is making that up. Bishop, I don't know. Maybe they prayed to the Father one time. It just, he, is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life? So Jesus would know. He said, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. You ain't, you ain't asked the Father nothing in my name. You have not, because you've been with me. But then he says, on, in that day, ask, and you will receive, watch this, that your joy may be full. Prayer is about you getting something, you receiving something. The works of God is about the Father being glorified in the Son. Not the same purpose, not the same end, not the same result. Mm -hmm. I'm not making any sense. All right. All right, he says, he says, you have never asked the father anything in my name. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's right there. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, if you ask in my name in that day, you will receive that your joy may be full. This is about your needs being met. Mm -hmm. Now in the new covenant, once you are saved, you have the right to use the name of Jesus and your faith to get anything that your covenant says you can have. Yeah. Your covenant says you can house, have a house, ask for it. Your covenant says you can have a car, ask for it. Your covenant says you can get some dollars to pay your mortgage, ask for it. You have a right to ask for anything on a regular basis, but you have to ask in faith. And you have to know that faith sometimes takes a while. Yeah. Am I making any sense? Faith is not magic. That's why the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he's saying, if you want it, then you should make sure you are constantly hearing the word of God. So you are constantly keeping your faith at a certain level, which would bring about your prayer coming to pass a lot faster. I hope I'm helping somebody. Are you with me? Yes. Somebody say, I'm with you, Bishop. I'm with you, Bishop. So once you're saved, you got a right to ask for anything that your covenant says you got. Why? Because the father wants your joy to be full. Don't tell me God wants you sick. Don't tell me God wants you broke. Don't tell me God wants you depressed. Don't tell me God wants you lonely. He wants your joy to be full. And he's going to do it so your joy is full. The father is. The father is. He says, ask and you will receive. The problem is you've got to ask correctly. You've got to, ask, because the Bible says, if you don't ask correctly, you don't get it. You, he says in James, you don't have it because you ask amiss. That's in the book of James. You are asking wrong. You are asking with wrong motives. And so you don't have it. But if you ask correctly, God says he's going to give it to you. I'm trying to help you get guaranteed answer prayers. Am I making any sense? All right. Okay, 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 okay. Somebody say, if I ask correctly, I will receive. 
oftentimes Christians don't receive because they just didn't ask correctly. And they didn't have a preacher to say, hey, there's a way to go about this. So they just father or, or sometimes they pray to Jesus. You know how many Christians, think about how many Christians you know still praying to Jesus. And he said, you shouldn't ask me nothing. Well, if you're praying to Jesus, then how's it going to come to pass? You ain't asking correctly. You can't get no guarantee with that. You can't get no guarantee. And you know why? Because we listen, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you, or how it go. I don't even know the verse because I'm so against it. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. What how good? Call him up and tell him what you want. That's don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. Don't call Jesus up and tell him what you want. Don't you do it. That is a good way to not get it. He said, in that day you shall ask me. He on the main line for conversation. You could call him up and say, G, I love you. I love you. I love you. Lord, today, oh, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Do that. Tell him that. My heart, my mind. My soul belongs to you. Oh, you paid the price for me way back on Calvary. And so I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That, that's what you tell Jesus. Not, can I get a car? I'm trying tonight. I'm trying. Talk to him. But don't ask him for stuff. You have to know in the Bible, I hope you write this down. I hope you write this down. You have to know what the father does. I say this when I'm teaching in my classes. You have to know what the son does. You have to know what the Holy Spirit does. You have to know what angels do. You got to know what you do. The father doesn't do what the son does. The father didn't come down across for you. He said, his son, you got, it's your Bible. You got to know who does what. Am I making any sense? Okay. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. So it, watch this, watch this. Let me see. Let me try this. Let me, I'm trying to come at it a whole bunch of ways. Um, so when I was little, when I was little, when I, when I was little, uh, uh, that was yesterday. When I was, <laughs> when I was little, when I was little, when I was little, when I was little um, Mom, can I have some ice cream? And this is when, I'm saying this is when I was so little, my parents were still together. My, and, my, and my father has always been a stickler. So yes, sir. No, sir. My father was in the military. My father was a Marine. Um, my father is a stickler for discipline. So if I ask my mom, can I have some ice cream? He, he, he would say, say that again. Uh, I, I, can I have some ice cream, please? So this is what he would say. Can you? No, I'm like, that's what I'm asking y'all. He would say, can you? You And then I, I would just look with the dumb look because I'm like, huh? And he would say, no, the way you say that is may I, mm -hmm. not can I, because it's obviously that you can. Mm -hmm. But what you are doing is asking for permission. So it is may I and not can you. And if you say can you in this house, then you will never get it. Because you are asking a question. This is what my father said, that you already know the answer to. You know you have the ability to scoop out the ice cream. You know you have the ability to eat the ice cream. So I don't want to hear you ask me, can you do something that you already know you can do? Yeah. If you are asking permission, then your words matter. Then you say, may I? And that's probably why when people talk to me, maybe today I'm a stickler. Uh, just thought about it because somebody was a stickler with me. You got to say it the right way. So may I, and so I would say, may I have some ice cream? And uh, uh, my mama would usually say sure. And my dad liked ice cream. So therefore he would want some. So, you know, 
there's more. All right. So you get what I'm saying. It, it, it's how you ask. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to get to. How you ask. It was as simple as changing the can I to a may I. It was that simple. Some of you are talking to Jesus when you're supposed to be talking to the Father. Some of you are asking for stuff that ain't in the word. Some of you are asking incorrectly or asking wrong. And I'm telling you, if you learn these rules, I'm going to get you some prayers answered. Am I making any sense? It could be something very small keeping you from getting your car, keeping you from getting your money. Now watch this. When I said, can I have some ice cream? I was very sincere. Somebody said he was so sincere. I was, I'm a little kid. I'm sincere. I just want some ice cream. God, does, God doesn't go with the fact that you sincerely want a car mm -hmm. or you could sincerely want a house or you were sincerely not to get foreclosed on. Or Sincerity is not the thing. I wish I had somebody. Else. Somebody say it doesn't matter how sincere you are. There are a lot of people who ask God for things with great sincerity but fail to get them because they didn't ask correctly. I'm going to say that again. There are a lot of people who ask God for things with great sincerity of heart, but they don't always get them because they didn't ask correctly. And they think that God doesn't want them to have it. That is not true at all. God absolutely wants them to have it. He just wants them to ask correctly. Well, why is God being all extra? I'm going to give you this verse. He does everything decently and in order. And God is not throwing his order away because you didn't learn it. So Jesus says, if your life is jacked up, come learn of me. God says not changing his order. He just going to tell you to learn of me. Grace and peace is multiplied by the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Again, you have to learn the rules. It's not your sincerity. It's do you know the answer to the test? That's why you have to go to a Bible preaching but watch this, Bible teaching church where you can learn the Bible because you would be surprised that if you just move the decimal point, how much stuff would fall into your life. If you change the word, if you get the rules. Oh my God. Is anybody still, they still listen? They didn't cut me off, did they? All right. I, I want you to get it. Somebody say, I got to do it right. I got to do it right. Uh, God does things decently and in order, God is a God of order. And, and, and the seasons, watch this. January, then what comes after January? Then what? Then what? Then what? Then June, then July, then August, then January. No, January don't come after August? Okay, then, then December after August. Then, well, all right, after August will come. Then we'll come. Then we'll come. Then we'll come. And then we'll come. So January don't come until 12 months later. Why? Because God is a God in order. How come he just don't throw in an a, a arbitrary February since black people need a month? Right. How come, you know, they ain't treating black people right? Let me give them another February. Right. No, no, he don't do that. Right. Okay, I'm, I'm trying. Sunday, right? Uh -huh. Monday, right? Tuesday, right? Yes. Sunday again. No, no, because no, he's a God of decent. Y'all looking, I know I'm probably sounding crazy, but I'm serious. Am, am I making any sense? Sure. Somebody say God works in order. Works in order. Tell me when the sun fell out the sky. Yeah. Tell me when the moon fell out the sky. Yeah. In the daytime, we'll come out. And in the nighttime, we'll begin to come out. Tell me when the moon and the sun switch places. They don't do that. Why? Because God does everything in order. He said the sun to God the day and the moon to God the night. That's in Genesis chapter one. And he ain't changed it. That's right. He could. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to make enough light come out the moon. I mean, he made the moon anyway. But no, this is how it worked. I'm trying. So God is not trying to penalize you because you didn't ask right. The rules were made in the Bible before you ever showed up here. The Bible didn't get written after you was born. Yeah. The Bible didn't get written after you were saved. These rules have been in the Bible before you ever got born. You got to learn them. Yeah. If you want a guaranteed answer prayer. Somebody put guarantee in the chat. Put guarantee in the chat. Guarantee. I'm talking to people who want guarantee. Guarantee. 
And you want to know what's weird? We will listen. Somebody say, I'll go to the doctor. And I listen to the doctor. The doctor be like, take, take this three times a day. You don't even like medicine. Somebody be like, you want some medicine? No, I don't do medicine like that. Doctor tell you to take medicine. What you do? Take medicine. How many times a day you take it? Three. Go to the dentist. He said, do this. Well, some I'm talking about people who breath don't stand. But he said, he, he said, because some people are that some people you do treat the dentist like you treat God. You just don't. Oh, <laughs> you just don't. You, dentist and God. You treat them oh, a little. But 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 for for the most people, the electric company, the the, the doctor, you you kind of obey them. Am I making any sense? Because you want the results. It's like God and the dentist, you don't really. You don't really care about getting the results. And, you know, you brush your teeth three times a day. When you brush your te teeth six times a week. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> like my smile? <laughs> no. 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 Giving people third degree burns on the back of their neck. No. 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 Ah, that hurt. That hurt. Stop breathing on me. Uh, I'm, what I'm saying is. <laughs> what I'm saying. Oh, I need my own special. Anyway, anyway, what I'm saying, seriously, is that you, you got to listen to God and obey the rules if you want it guaranteed. Now, you could play potluck with your teeth, and for some of y'all who don't brush your teeth twice, uh, uh, three times a day or twice a day or once a day, you know what you say? My teeth still in here. Barely, but they still in here. It, 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 does, it doesn't matter if... We need a jackhammer to get all the stuff off of them. They, they, still, they still in here. And that's what you do with God. I'm still saved. I'm still righteous. I'm still going to heaven. It don't matter if you broke as heck. It don't matter that you sick as heck. It don't matter that you depressed as heck. It don't matter that that you, 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 you ain't got nothing going on the way you needed to go on. You got to learn the rules. I'm trying. Is any, did they still with me? Yeah. Put learn the rules in the chat. Learn the rules in the chat. All right, verse 23. Give me verse 23 again. I'm, I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to a close. Coming to a close. And that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he's going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, don't ask him for anything. Yeah. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the light. He cannot lie. You got to ask the Father if you want it. Can Jesus lie? No. no. So since Jesus lied, he can't, can't lie. He's telling you how to get the stuff. How do you get the stuff? By asking the Father. That is different than making a demand for works. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So if I don't get any results, I must be doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. I must be doing something incorrectly. And that's what I want to help you not do. I don't want you to do it incorrectly. I don't want you to do it wrong. So what's the rule? Give me First John 5, uh, 14 to 15, and I'm closing for the day. I hope I did all right today. I hope I did all right today. First John 5, uh, 14 to 15, Amplified Classic. Got to ask according to the rules. And this is the confidence that we, the assurance, the privilege of boldness, which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, somebody say anything. Now he's going to qualify to anything. He's going to qualify it. Make any request according to his will. Where is his will found in? In his word. So I got to make sure. And where's his, what's his word for me? The New Testament. So anything I, between Romans and Jews, I can find. According to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to us and hears us. So if I ask according to his word, he listens to me and hears me. Verse 15. Since I, we positively know that he listens to us and whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted us our present possession and requests made of him. Because prayer is about God giving something to you. Works is about you making a demand so that Jesus can do something so the Father can be glorified in what the Son has done for us. Those are two different things. And I need you to be clear about that so that you can use the name for prayer and use the name equally for the works of God. I hope I was all right today. If you got something out of that, put yep, Y-E-P, yep, 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 yep. Put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. I tried to, I'm trying to, I really, 
It is my prayer. It is my desire that by going to Oasis of Faith and by you meeting me, that your life comes up. That I, I, that my, my, I'm preaching. My legacy is that I impact people's lives for, for good. My, my assignment is to cause you to walk in your prophetic destiny. My assignment is to create a people that cannot be destroyed. And my assignment is to cause people to have heaven on earth. That's what God has anointed me, called me, favored me, poised me, positioned me, uh, equipped me, imbued me with uh, the power to do. So that's what I want to do. I want to teach you the word so that the word changes your life and so that you live up here and not down here. The, the way, the, with the power of God, you live supernaturally. You, you don't have to get it off your own effort, but God does it for you. Uh, uh, but that can't happen if you're not saved to, to receive all that God has for you. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior. And so if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come to your life, I mean, you're not saved. And if I wasn't saved, you know what I'd do? Get saved. And I wouldn't wait around. You know, when I'd get saved right now so that I could begin receiving the benefits that God wants me to have. So if you are not saved, I'm going to ask that you repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask uh, that you would just help me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he rose from the dead. And I believe that he made me right with you. And because I'm right with you, help is on the way. Because I'm right with you, you made him my high priest of good things. He makes sure that I receive good things. And Father, I thank you that I believe Jesus bled for me. Because of his blood, no punishment from you no punishment from you is coming my way. Father, I thank you that you are my Father. Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my High Priest. I receive I'm saved tonight and that I'm learning that good things are coming my way in Jesus' name. Help me where I'm weak. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, could you put save in the chat tonight? We want to reach out to you, right? Reach out to you. We want to minister to you. We want to share some good news with you. If you're not a member of a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church, you really need to be one. I'm telling you, in the early Days we just wanted a good preacher. We wanted somebody good. I know how to real. I don't make a way. Somehow. Yeah, we wanted that. That's that's what we wanted. We wanted that gravy. But I'm telling you, if you want to live up here, you need somebody that's going to teach you the word of God. The gravy is cool, but you gotta learn the word of God. I want to teach you the word of God. I really do. I want to teach your mama. I want to teach your father. I want to teach your brother. I want to teach your sister. I want to teach your cousin. I want to teach your best friend. I want to teach your god daughter. I want to teach your god. I want to teach your god brother. I want to teach your uh, your boss. I want to teach your employee. I want to teach you the word of God, so that you can live at another level, another level, another level. You want to need to be a member of a Bible teaching church. Put join, join, join. Um. What's the song? Uh, come to Jesus. You might already come to Jesus. Come to Oasis of Faith right now. Uh, I really want to minister to you. I really would love to be able to be the man of God that speaks into your life on a regular basis. Uh, I believe that the best is yet to come. And I believe that you are going to walk in the fullness of the power of God. Join, join, join. Okay.
put you on the chat. We'll reach out to you. Maybe you want to be a covenant partner. Covenant partner. Covenant partner. Covenant partner. Now, being a covenant partner uh, is your faithful financial gift uh, that you give. So, uh, I pray sometimes, uh, you'll hear me say, you can give a million dollars. You can give $5 million. Now, why do I say that? Because the Bible says, if I pray the word of God, right? Pray the word of God, he hears me. And if I know he hears me, then I know I have presently what I ask. So if I know the word of God for me personally is that God has given me uh, assignments that cost millions of dollars and I know that I'm supposed to be in covenant with people to do it, then once I pray for covenant partners, that will give us so a million or so five million, then I stand on that. I stand on that. And if I stand on it, then I've got to call it in. I got to call it in. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know as sure as my name is Troy Grant, that if I call it in, it's going to happen. If I thank him for it, it's going to happen because I understand how prayer works. It's got to happen. Doesn't have to happen tomorrow, but it has to happen because God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he'll perform it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. That's why you need faith because some stuff, some stuff happens quick, but most of the stuff that God ever did in my life didn't happen in a day. There was some stuff that happened in a day. There's some stuff that happened fast, but most of the stuff that God did that was valuable or that was monumental or that was life-changing, it took a while. Because I had to be in faith. And I had to, I had to show myself uh, with capacity. So uh, I'm just saying, if you know that God is doing something in your life, don't be afraid to call it out. And I'm asking for covenant partners. I have some. But I believe there are thousands and thousands of more people, maybe even millions, who are going to be covenant partners. If you are one of them, Please put partner in the chat. I'm going to pray for you, your family, your business, your ministry. I'm going to send you a letter. I'm going to send you a word of encouragement, a, a C, a, 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 a MB, MPG3, something, MP3 for that month. I'm going to send it to you. Um, but also, you are going to be helping me to enlarge the kingdom of God and to facilitate better in the kingdom of God. We are coming together. And there is a measure of God's presence. He says, if they come and touch you and greet, I'll be in the midst. There's a measure of God's presence that we have on our life or that we have access to because we have come together, because we are covenant partners. So I'm asking you to prayerfully consider. The Bible says, why is that important that we come together? The Bible says one could put a thousand to flight. Two could put 10,000 to flight. Two are better than one. So there's so much more that God can do when we are partners together. So I'm asking that you would consider being a covenant partner and giving whatever gift that God has laid on your heart to give on a monthly basis. And if you want to be a one-time giver and you're that $5 million giver, you're that $1 million giver, you're the $100,000 giver, you want to be a one-time $5 giver. We appreciate all that you do. And when you give your offering, your tithes, your gifts of love to TKG ministry, no, according to Hebrews 7, that your high priest, Jesus Christ, is worshiping the Father on uh, your behalf with those tithes, seeds, and gifts of love, expressions of love that you sow into TKG Ministries. God bless you. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. You got to, somebody say, the need is in the seed. Whatever you need is in your seed. You sow your seed. The Bible says in, in Genesis that he has made the seed meet. It, provision. Your provision is in your seed. Yeah. You sow your seed and that provision is going to come back to you. It's something in your hand that is meant to harvest what you need. Something in your hand that is meant to bring about your great desire. You sow your seed and you call it forth. You got to, you, you call it forth, you water it, you praise God for it. And the Bible says we sow it and we go to sleep day and night. We don't know how it's going to come, but we know that it's going to come because God is not a man that he should lie. And so we sow our seed and we believe God 
We thank him for it on a daily basis. We praise him for it on a daily basis. We worship him. We give him glory. We sow again. And God says, first the seed, uh, first the, uh, the ear, what, uh, Lord, I'm saying it wrong. Uh, uh, first the sprout, then the, the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, and then we bring the sickle to it. So even, even that says it's not magic. Even that says it doesn't come overnight. The Bible says seed, time, and then harvest. So over the course of time, God is going to bring you what you need, but it starts with you sowing your seed. I'm going to ask that you sow your seed tonight. And even if you were listening to what I said and you didn't get it, sow your seed and ask for revelation because the seed that you sow, when you hear the word and you sow it into that word, uh, that revelation comes back so powerful, so powerfully, so powerfully. Uh, so I'm just saying, whatever you need tonight, there's a seed that is can work to bring it to pass. All right, it's communion time. I said we would take communion. Um, while I'm, I don't know if, if y'all were ready for communion, so for all the people, don't panic. Don't panic. You See, this is how somebody say there's no time, there's no distance, and there's no space in God. So don't get in a car accident trying to go to Wawa to get communion. Don't, don't go scrambling through your house, uh, taking your food off your baby plate. Don't do none of that. We're going to pray. Then once we pray, even if you have to wait till you get off, then you go get a little piece of something and drink a little swallow something. And just because it happened five minutes later don't mean that it, it, it ain't communion. You're praying over it. You're taking that as communion. This is why you got to have a relationship with God. So you don't have to be all caught up in rules and, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now I got to wait for the prayer again. No, you, you wasn't ready. It's my fault because I didn't tell you in the beginning. I did tell you Sunday, but you might not have been on or you might not have been paying attention or whatever. But if you don't got it, just when I finish, go get your little Jolly Rancher and your little swig of water. Uh, put your mouth on the sink. Whatever you're going to do. <laughs> but we're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the ability to take communion. We thank you that it is the the illustration or the, the representation of of the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that Jesus' body was broken for our divine health and healing. And we live on the righteousness and by his stripes we are healed. We thank you, Father, that the whole our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost gives life to our mortal body. Therefore, we command our bodies to line up with the word of God and to function correctly in the name of Jesus and that there be no malfunction. We thank you for the shalom, peace of God that reigns in our heart like an umpire. And we have nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. We thank you according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that we have intimate partnership with you as we fellowship around the body of Jesus Christ. And so we eat with great thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Well, mighty God, we serve. Glory to your name. Father, we thank you that we discriminate between the body and the blood. We make a difference. And you said many are sick, many are asleep because they didn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. So we make a difference. We know that there's a difference between the body and the blood. And therefore we live long, we live strong, we live healthy, we live, let, we live well, and we live free. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, we thank you for the cup of blessing. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, again, we have intimate partnership with you as we fellowship around the cup of blessing. The blessing of the Lord makes us rich and adds no sorrow. So we thank you that we are enriched every time we drink. We thank you according to Matthew 26 that we're refreshed every time we drink. And then, Father, we thank you that the blood paid for our forgiveness of sins, our remission of sins, our redemption from sin and the curse of the law. It paid for the abrogation of the law, meaning that there is no law from you that stands against us. It cleanses us and covers us at all times. And we receive our free gift of righteousness and our overflowing abundance of grace. So we reign as kings in this life in and through the man, Christ Jesus, we drink with great thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. If you have a prayer request, put your prayer in the chat. Well, you know I'm preaching about prayer, so somebody must be able to pray for you around this time. But put your prayer in the chat. Put your prayer in the chat. Uh, Captain of the Little People. 
<laughs> I saw Captain of the Little People on Sunday. Yo. Captain of the Little People is so short. How short? <laughs> Somebody said, how short is she? <laughs> Alright, she's so short that she can't get on the kitty ride at, at the, uh, at the, uh, at the, uh, well, that, that wasn't a good one. But don't worry about it. Just know she's short. Just know she's short. She can get on the kitty ride. She can get on the kitty ride. She get on kitty rides because she wear makeup, so they gonna know that she <laughs> she older. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So what else I got? Uh, <laughs> send in your testimony. Hey, hey, sister uh, <laughs> Tiffany Stewart, send in part two. We love to hear part two. This is part one. Um, and send in your testimonies, and uh, I think that's it. All right. Um. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your wonderful favor. We thank you that prayer works. We thank you, Father, that you are teaching us, evolving us, developing us so that we can be people who get guaranteed answer prayers. Uh, we thank you that uh, the best is yet to come. We curse the devil. We bind the devil. We lose everything that pertains to life and godliness. We speak now, God, that angels are bringing about and helping to bring about the manifestation of our inheritance because we are heirs of salvation. Now, God, anything, any, any, any uh, prestidigitation, machination, any ledger domain, jiggery pokery, any uh, uh, perfidy, any lie, anything that the devil is trying to do, any assault, any accosting, uh, in anything that he's trying to do, we command it to cease and desist right now. And anything that he's planted that we don't know about it, that we're unaware of, we pull it up, the root and the residue of it. We deracinate it, cast it in the sea and extirpate it in the mighty name of Jesus, our Christ and King. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. I hope you're getting something out of this series. I love you so much. See you on Sunday. Don't take no wooden nickels. Get that communion in. Peace, Deacon Haywood.